Today we are answering the most common questions about electric cars. So if you're thinking about one, but you might be a little bit iffy on it, maybe a little bit scared, don't be scared. They are actually very friendly. Uh, they don't bite. And if you scratch them right behind the, right behind the charging port, they will purr. All right, so I'm actually gonna be joined by an Inside EVs contributor, Tom Malogny. He's been in business of talking and driving electric cars for a very long time. And these questions, we haven't just made, made, we didn't make them up. These are the actual questions that people ask us about electric cars. So these top 10 questions are pretty much crowdsourced from people like you. All right, so uh, before I bring in Tom, I uh, just want to remind you that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out their all-electric SUV called Ambyte coming to the US and Europe next year. It's absolutely no money down to reserve one, so go to the description of this video and reserve one today. And by Evanex, the, uh, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. Use E4 Electric as a discount code for purchases over $100. All right. Without further ado, let me bring in Tom and let's talk about electric cars. Tom, how are you doing, my friend? Hey, Alex, good to be back. All right, all right. So today we're doing something a little bit different because uh, these are the questions we're gonna be answering for people who are, who are not familiar with electric cars, though uh, those of you guys who have them uh, may help you answer questions from your friends and family, which I'm sure they ask you regularly. All right, so let's get to the first question. And the first question is, how long does it take to charge an electric car? Okay, well, let's get one of the most difficult questions out of the way right up front. It's difficult because with a gas car, uh, people know how long it takes to refuel, and they pretty much all take about the same time. Yeah, you might have a little bit of a bigger gas tank than a smaller car, and you can fill it up a little bit. It takes a little bit longer. But in general, it's only five, six, seven minutes, and all the cars refuel in about the same amount of time. Now, with electric cars, it's not that simple. Uh, depending on how big your battery is, depending on where you're charging it, is going to influence how long the car takes to charge. That's because you can charge your car on a regular 120-volt source. That's a regular household outlet. You can plug in your electric car and charge it there but it's gonna take a long time to charge. It could take hours to days to fully charge an electric car with a very big battery. I like to talk to people, when I talked about how long it takes to charge a car, I like to translate it into miles per hour of charging. On a regular 120 volt household outlet here in the US, an electric, the typical electric car will get between three and five miles of range per hour on charging, that's it. But no need to panic about that because most people won't charge their electric car in a regular household outlet. Uh, at home, you'll typically buy a level two charging station and that charges it on 240 volt electric. That will charge your car at around between 20 and 35 miles of range per hour. So as what you can see, plug in in a few hours, your electric car should be charged. However, if you're on long distance trips, you need to charge even faster than a few hours. You're not gonna wait three hours to charge your car if you're driving a four or 500 mile road trip. Luckily, there are these things called DC fast chargers. Tesla calls them superchargers for their vehicles. These are run on DC, which is direct current, and they charge the car up to a thousand miles an hour. So that means a 15 or 20 minute stop can replenish 200, 250 miles. Therefore, on these long distance road trips, you probably only have to stop for about 20 minutes. Yes, it's a little bit longer than a gas car, but you can stop, run into the store, use the restroom, get a cup of coffee and come out and continue on your journey. We should also point out that those weird devices behind you are the home chargers. Yes, these are level two, 240 volt chargers that people would have in their household. Now, your garage won't look like this. I test these and write reviews for them. That's why I have so many. You would have one of them uh, hanging on the wall in your garage behind me if you had an electric car. All right, just wanted to clarify. Let's move on to the next question, but we're still staying on top of, a char of charging. All right, now that the car is charged, how, how long does the charge last? How, how, how far can, uh, can uh, an electric car go on one charge? 
Okay, that's a great question. So a lot of people just ask, uh, you know, how long does the charge last? Um, thinking that if they charge the car and they don't drive it in a, in a day or two later, they'll have to recharge it. That's just not the case. The electric cars hold their charge. Some of them have small vampire losses where you might lose a percent or two if you don't charge the car or if you don't drive it in a few days. But that's really not the issue. The, 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 with electric cars, it really depends on how far you drive. So a typical electric car can go anywhere from 100 miles to up to 300 and more miles of range. Uh, every electric car is different depending on how big the battery and how efficient the car is. It's kind of like some cars get you know, 18 miles per gallon, some of them get 45 miles per gallon. So you really have to take a look at what your individual electric car that you're interested in is. You look at the window sticker and it has the explanation on how big the battery is and how far the car can go. Uh, and, and, and it's a moving target. I think the, the furthest uh, an electric car can go right now is 373 miles. That's Tesla Model S, but that's going to be continuously improving. So, okay, now that, that we're talking about charging, now that people know they can charge at, at their garages, uh, you know, one of the biggest arguments to be made that, you know, if you drive in electric cars, you will save a lot of money on gas. So people know how much they spend on gas, but how much can they expect to spend on their on on the charging their cars at home. Okay, great question. So um, every electric car, like a gas car, some of them are more efficient than others. Some of the small cars are very efficient. Some of the bigger, more powerful cars might not be quite as efficient. Uh, so what you basically the rule of thumb is, the average electric car can go somewhere between three and four miles on a kilowatt hour of electricity. And let's say you have an electric car with a very big battery and it is 100 kilowatt hours. Uh, the average price of electricity in the US now is about 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Yes, it costs more in some areas. Again, you have to take a look at your electricity bill and see exactly what you're paying in your area. But if we go on national averages, the national average for electricity is 12 cents a kilowatt hour. So if you had an electric car that had a 100 kilowatt hour battery, a very big battery, the car can go 300, 350 miles per charge, it would cost $12 to charge the car. So basically, as I said, every electric car is different. Every gas car is different for efficiency. But I like to tell people electric cars are anywhere between two and three times less expensive to charge than a gas car is to refuel. All right, and, and really quick, uh, tell us a little bit about the pricing when you actually have to uh, a fast charge when you're taking a, a long trip, because it can right. vary from so, free to, you know, Yeah, I was referring to the cost that charges you to charge at home, because, you know, when you're paying your electricity bill at home, the average national price is 12 cents a kilowatt hour. When you're on the road and you're using these DC fast chargers or public charging stations, like I said, you have to expect to pay a premium because it's a service. Uh, so you are going to pay a little bit more, and that price can vary greatly depending on the network, depending on the charging station, the in individual location. It can be as inexpensive as what you pay at home. Some public charging stations are actually free. You can find them out there where you can actually charge your car for free. And then it goes all the way up to uh, what would be the equivalent to what you pay in gasoline. Uh, the thing is, most people aren't going to be using these public charging stations all the time. If you use it once a month because you're going on a long trip, you don't mind paying a few extra dollars uh, because you're charging at home daily and it's a very inexpensive. So the one time a month where you drove three, 400 miles, you, you typically isn't a problem if you're paying a little bit more for the electric because it's a service. You're paying to use their charging station, you know, their, their parking spot, and you have to expect to pay more. All right. Now let's move on to something that's uh, uh, we, we get asked a lot. Uh, and, and originally people kind of assume that electric cars are great for the environment compared to gas cars. But then some people have questioned, you know, in, in terms of, you know, the battery has to be produced, the cars need to be produced. There's still, you know, gas and fossil fuels being used in production. So at the end of the day, are electric cars better for the environment than gas cars? That's a great question. You have to understand that there's manufacturing involved with electric cars like there is with gas cars, and that produces pollution. Uh, you know, that's not great for the environment. The best thing would be is if we didn't have to manufacture anything, but that's not a reality. We have to 
we have to make and build things. We are moving to more sustainable manufacturing, which is great. So that's always going to happen. Now, as far as the overall life cycle of the car, you have to consider everything. And there are good studies done out there that have considered everything, the wells to wheels, you know, from, from mining, the minerals that are need to be used in the battery pack, uh, you know, to, to, to the paint that's used as spray on the car. There's some good surveys out there. There's good studies, I mean. And pretty much all of the ones that are done that aren't, haven't been sponsored by certain groups that, you know, have an agenda, uh, the independent ones all seem to point to the fact that the life cycle of an electric car has a much lower carbon footprint than that of a conventional internal combustion engine car. And as far as the refueling goes, uh, the Department of Energy has a great, study uh, it's available on their website that shows as far as for the united states uh it'll actually allow you to put in your zip code and it tells you where you live the energy mix of your electricity whether it's all produced by coal if it's a mixture of natural gas if it's renewable if it's nuclear so what they'll do is they'll compare an electric car to a gas car in your area and they'll tell you are you better off buying an electric car than a gas car here because you, you know a lot of people if, if you're charging your car and it's 100% coal-powered electricity, if you live right next to a coal-powered plant, it, it's, it's not the cleanest car. However, the, this DOE study shows that even if that's the situation and you're living and you're charging your car from 100% coal-powered electricity, it is equal to the best gas mileage, the best gas car that has the highest gas mileage. So in the worst case situation, it's tie with a gas car. So in most other situations, it's better. And in many situations, it's way better. Plus, our energy grid in this country is constantly getting cleaner. Every year, we decommission dirty coal-powered plants, and we add more renewables. So every year, electric cars get cleaner. All right, now let's move on to another question. And, and, and I, I think a lot of people confused electric cars with hybrid cars. For example, Toyota Prius is a hybrid, but so is, is a hybrid car is the same as an electric car? Yeah, so this is a real common question. As, as you know, I've talked to your readers before, I do electric vehicle dealership training, and even the dealers, uh, some of the people that work in the dealers have struggled with this. So there's hybrid electric cars, there's plug-in hybrid electric cars, and then there's battery electric cars. Hybrid electric cars are just plain hybrids. You can't plug them into a wall and charge the battery. What happens is the car has a very small battery. It doesn't have a battery, and the, and the car recharges the battery with the regenerative braking system. So there is this small battery, and a small percentage of the propulsion of the vehicle is done with electricity but it's a very small percentage. And the sole purpose of that is just to have the car get better gas mileage. So while technically you could say it's an electric car, it's called a hybrid electric car. Most people in the industry don't consider that an electric car. They don't consider electric cars, uh, a cars, electric cars, unless you can plug them in. There's plug in hybrid electric cars that do have gasoline engines and a battery, and you can plug it in and charge it. And then there's full battery electric cars or BEVs, battery electric vehicles. Those obviously are 100% electric. So a regular hybrid car, your typical, say, uh, Toyota a Prius, although they do have the Prius in a plug-in version also, but a typical hybrid Prius, most people won't consider it an electric car. Personally, I don't consider it an electric car. Either. It's just a very efficient gasoline car. Absolutely agreed. I do not consider hybrid cars uh, um, uh, electric cars. Now we, we've been talking about batteries a lot, right? Charging them, you know, uh, you know, and and whether they even have them. Uh, but a lot of people are concerned and they're asking, you know, if you have to replace a battery, how, how when do you have to do it, and how much is it gonna gonna cost them? Right. So you know, the first part of that is when do you have to replace a battery? Uh, and, you know, electric vehicles haven't been out that long. We've only had them out for about 10 years. So we don't have tons of data on this. But what we've seen so far is very encouraging. Uh, it points to the fact that the electric car batteries practically will last the lifetime of the vehicle. Uh, of course, there's some instances where that doesn't happen. But if the car is properly 
made and has a good thermal management system. Now, a thermal management system keeps the battery operating at optimal temperatures. Batteries don't like excessive heat. And if they get too hot and remain too hot for too long, they can lose their capacity earlier than they would have with normal use. And the, the, the one problem of any electric car that's been out so far is the Nissan Leaf. The early Nissan Leafs have had early battery degradation problems. And it's due to the fact that Nissan did not provide the car with a sophisticated thermal management system. Every other electric car on the market today has a good thermal management system that will ensure that the battery lasts practically the lifetime of the car, at least 100, 200, maybe 300,000 miles. There's Teslas on the road now that have 300, 400,000 miles on, on the original battery, probably even more. I, I haven't kept up to it. So I tell people, you know, how long do you plan on keeping this car? 200,000, 300,000 miles? Most people laugh at that. They say, no, maybe, you know, 100,000 miles at the most. Well, don't worry about the battery then. Uh, it, it's not going to be your problem. It, it, it'll last much longer than what you'll probably have that car. Number two, eventually the battery will have to get replaced if the car stays in service for many years and drives many hundreds of thousands of, of miles. So, to, to, But the problem is they want to know how much will it cost. So it's hard for me to look into the future and say, yeah, in, in, in eight years, if this car has 350,000 miles and you want a new battery in it, I, I really can't tell you what the battery is going to cost in eight years. It might cost ten, fifteen thousand dollars today, but you won't have to pay that because the battery's warranted for at least a hundred thousand miles, and you're not going to get that for many years. And the, the the data shows that these batteries lost last well beyond the initial hundred thousand or hundred and twenty thousand mile warranty. So you know it, it's 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 a question that that we try to put people at ease and say, don't worry, this battery's going to last very long really can't answer the price because battery prices are dropping so much every year. It's impossible to look at into the future. If you want the best guess, okay, maybe $4,000 to replace a battery in seven or eight years, a big battery. And that's just a guess, but chances are you're not going to have to worry about that. And even if you do have to replace the battery by then five, 10 years down the road, that battery is going to be so much cheaper and, and better and last that's longer. So it's yeah. going to be a great deal anyway. All right. So let's talk about something that everyone's concerned, no matter what car they're buying. But, you know, electric cars are made a little different, actually a lot different in some cases. But are they as safe as safe gas cars? Yeah, yeah you know, there's been a lot of media sensationalism and electric car fires and everybody's worried about electric car fires. Electric cars... Uh, have a less of a chance of having a fire than a gasoline powered car. Just if you go on the basic statistics, electric cars are extremely safe. Um, you know, any car, any vehicle, you, you store a lot of energy in it. Yes. There, there there's risks with, with gas cars, you know, with, with, or with an electric car, if you had a hydrogen car, if you had a natural gas car, there, there's always some sort of a risk involved when you store a ton of energy in this, Me moving metal object that can go fast. But in general, we have enough data now to see electric cars are extremely safe. Some of the, uh, some of the electric cars, like the Tesla vehicles, are the, the safest vehicles on the road. They get some of the highest safety ratings of any car on the road. So yeah, electric cars are completely safe. Um, you, you know, don't have to worry about that at all. In many cases, they're safer than their gas counterparts. And we should also mention when you see a Tesla on fire, that's because it's so rare. And the, the reason you don't see gas cars on fire as much because it's so common. There's tens of thousands of them go up in flames and people die in them all the time. And on top of that, the reason the electric cars are a little bit more safe, it's also because they don't have an engine to smash into your face. And instead of that, the crumble zones can be designed so much better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, there's a few technical reasons I wasn't going to dive into as far as that, but electric vehicles do offer the designers um, options that they don't have with gasoline powered cars. So they actually can build a safer car. All right. So next question is, uh, you know, people who live uh, here in California, uh, you know, electric cars perform very well. But what if you live somewhere not in California where there's actually snow and rain and cold? Uh, uh, how do how how uh, can you charge those cars in while it's raining or snowing? 
Yeah, so um, it's been documented, well documented, that electric cars are extremely safe to charge in virtually any weather conditions. Uh, driving rains, uh, snowstorms. I've had electric cars for 10 years now. I've charged them in every kind of weather that there is. There's safety devices built into the charging equipment and into the vehicle that ensure that if there's any kind of a, of, of, of a, uh, a unsafe situation, the car immediately stops charging. Um, when, 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 you, when you go to connect a connector to the car, it's not live yet. The car has to make a secure connection. There's a communication protocol that talks to the charger, says, okay, I'm connected, I'm locked in, it's safe, now energize. So, um, you know, these things are well, well designed to be completely safe. They can charge in any weather and it's not a problem. All right. Now, another thing that people ask about is obviously maintenance, because if you have a gas car, pretty much right away, you start having to do oil changes, uh, tune ups, the transmission fluid flushes and so many other, you know, it, it add up. It, it, it adds up now the for the electric cars uh you know there is no engine there's no transmission uh does do they require any maintenance at all so the best thing of one of the best things about electric cars is you buy one and you, you know it either gets delivered to you or you drive off the lot and the the your your client advisor basically says it was nice knowing you <laughs> because there's no scheduled maintenance there's no, I'll see you in, in 2,000 miles, then 5,000 miles, then 10,000 miles, then 25,000 miles. No of those annoying emails saying your car is long overdue for service. Bring it in for the 25,000 mile. We need to change your filters, your hoses, you know, your, uh, change the oil, do all this stuff. Um, of course, electric cars have maintenance. You, you, tires, windshield wipers, things that wear out. But there is no real regular maintenance. Even the brake pads will last 100,000, 150,000 miles. They'll probably, uh, you know, rot or rust before before they they wear out because the, of regenerative braking that 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 slows the car down. You very rarely use your friction brakes. Um, so no, there's no set maintenance. You can save thousands of dollars over the lifetime of a vehicle because there's no regular required maintenance. Things are gonna break, uh, you know, an air conditioning compressor can break, one of the components on the car can fail, anything can break, but there is no real regular maintenance and that adds up. Absolutely, uh, So, and that's one of many reasons that electric cars are, uh, you know, uh, uh, cheaper, much cheaper to own as far as once, once you bring it home. All right, now, uh, the, the, uh, now, these questions are in no particular order, but I know this last question uh, is, is on, on the mind of everybody who's uh, shopping for any car, but especially an electric car. Are electric cars more expensive than gas cars? Okay, so currently, electric cars typically cost a little bit more than their gasoline counterparts. Now, much of that can be offset with incentives, federal tax credits, local rebates, but we're still at the point where electric cars do initially cost more than gas cars. However, the good news is over the lifetime of the car, most electric cars will actually cost less than their gasoline counterparts. Once you've taken consideration the fuel savings, which can be a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per year, that's with normal driving. Someone who drives fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand miles a year can save a thousand to maybe fifteen hundred dollars per year just in fuel. Then what we just talked about maintenance. There's no maintenance on electric cars. You can you're going to save some money there when you factor all that in and add in either a state incentive or federal tax credit. What happens is over the life cycle, the lifetime of the car, total cost of ownership actually ends up being lower than the gas car. Problem is you show up to the lot and you look at the electric car and it says, hmm, $38,000. And then you look at the gas car next to it that kind of looks like the same, it's about the same size, it's the same class of vehicle. And it says $31,000 and you say, geez, you know, $7,000, I, you know, I kind of thought about going electric, but yeah, I'm not going to spend that much more money just so I can, uh, you know, be a little bit more environmentally friendly. The fact of the matter is, if you were to sit down and do the math, and hopefully the salesperson can do this for you, 
and explain over the lifetime of the car, it actually is going to save you money. So don't be afraid of high MSRPs, high sticker prices on electric, electric cars. Take a look at the whole to total cost of ownership. Now, there's a, a bright side to this. Electric car prices have been dropping dramatically in the last few years, and it, they're going to continue to do so. Most industry ex experts say that by 2022, maybe 2023, we'll have cost parity. At that point, you'll be able to walk into a dealership, and even the MSRP, the sticker price of the gas car and the electric car, same type of vehicle, same about the same driving range, is going to be equal. Once we get to there, then it'll be a no-brainer because with the lower cost of maintenance and lower refueling, you'll be way ahead with, with an electric car. And at that point, we won't even need any kind of incentives anymore. We won't need a federal tax credit, local rebates, nothing. The cars will be able to just sell themselves because they will be better cars and they'll cost less. There's a lot of talk about the incentives and we shouldn't be subsidizing cars. These were never meant to last forever. It was just to kickstart an industry an industry that's going to be better for all of us because it's going to help us clean our air and clean the environment. And in many cases, some of the employers provide the not only just electric car parking that's closer to the to the door. So when you walk for many rows to get to the door of your office and you see all this, you know, electric cars charging, not only they walk, you know, much much less than you, which may be not even the, be the, the best thing in the world, but they're also charging for free. A lot of employers will allow that for free. But yeah. on another hand, in many states, United States and in, in other countries, that you can also get a carpool sticker. So you can go into the carpool lane by yourself and save yourselves not money, but time, you know, with your family or friends yeah. and so forth. So there are definite perks to electric cars. For instance, here in New Jersey, where I live, um, you get the, the carpool access, but there's no sales tax when you buy a car. And you also get a discount on your easy pass. Uh, so you pay less on, on tolls. So uh, there, there's from state to state, you have to check exactly what's available where you live, but there's definitely perks. Absolutely. All right, Tom, listen, uh, I, I know we've answered uh, the most common questions. I'm sure there are more. And I'm sure if by now, by this time, there's already uh, comments and questions in the comment section. If you do have a question for me and Tom, uh, you know, we'll either answer them I I right in there or maybe just make another video. Would you be up for that, Tom? Oh, absolutely. We could probably do three or four of these easily with 10 more questions each time. Absolutely. But I think we hit all the main ones this this in this go around. Absolutely agree. All right, listen, thank you so much. And I will see you next weekend. Thanks for having me, Alex. Take care. All right, guys. And don't forget to follow Tom on uh, on Twitter. Uh, he also travels a lot. Well, not as much lately. <laughs> Most of our trips got canceled. But when we do, uh, he definitely posts a lot of cool stuff on his Twitter account. The link to that is in the description of this video. And of course, he's an Inside EVs contributor. Uh, check out his work. I put uh, the uh, link to his, uh, to his work there as well. Don't forget, there are many other exciting contributors to this channel that are here weekly or monthly. They include Sandy Monroe, for example, uh, uh, the CEO of Fairdive Future, Karsten Breitfeld, Rich Rebuilds, and many, many others. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, this could be a good time to do so. And of course, don't forget to, uh, to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, I hope this helped. And uh, we are, me and Tom are looking forward to answering your questions. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.